Good evening and welcome to the inaugural broadcast of the MTU Succeeding Together series. My name is Donna Daverin and I'm delighted that you could join us this evening for a taste of what we have to offer here in the Department of Tourism and Hospitality at MTU's Bishopstown campus. It's been a very different academic year for us and although our 600 plus students have worked hard and engaged with us virtually, we're really looking forward to welcoming them back to live classes and to the campus, hopefully in the coming semester. Our students study a range of courses in the hospitality, tourism management, beverage industry management and culinary areas. And this evening we want to give you a taste of just some of what we have to offer in both a culinary and a mocktail demonstration giving you access to both our demonstration kitchen and our beverage industry management lab. I'm delighted to be joined by culinary lecturer JJ Healy, who will demonstrate both the main course and the dessert, and by beverage industry management lecturer Gail Cotter, who will share some of her favourite mocktails with you. I hope that you've had the chance to pick up the ingredients which were available on www.mtu.ie forward slash succeeding together forward slash culinary. But if not, you'll have a chance to try out the dishes and drinks later as the ingredient list will remain up on the website. We also have a great competition for those who do participate and you can win one of two 50 euro one for all vouchers. I'll share the details on this shortly. So without further ado, I'd like to hand you over to JJ Healy in the demonstration kitchen at MTU Bishopstown for tonight's main course, a wonderful roast cod wrapped in streaky bacon with a potato, tomato and saffron broth. Thank you, JJ. Hello, my name is JJ Healy. I'm a lecturer here in the Tourism and Hospitality Department in Munster Technological University in Cork. And today I'm going to do a dish and it's, uh, it's cod wrapped in uh, streaky bacon, in smoked streaky bacon. And I'm doing a uh, potato, tomato and saffron broth with it. All right, so I'll just start as we go along and I'll explain what I'm doing. So what I have here is I have two pieces of cod and they're uh, skinned and pin boned, so there's no bones left in them. The bone has been taken out and they've been skinned and it's about, they're about 150 gram pieces. All right, so what I'm gonna do is just add a little bit more flavor and a little bit more moisture to kind of help protect them. I'm gonna wrap them in bacon here as well now, but I'm gonna brush them with a little bit of melted butter and you can see here the butter is warm and the cod is just out of the fridge, so it's just gonna kind of solidify it small bit, which is nice. And it'll help the rashers kind of stick onto it as well. So we brush that on there. And then we'll put a little bit of pepper. And I'm not gonna really put any salt because the bacon is gonna be salty, all right? So for this then what I want to do is this is the presentation side I want to look, so I'm actually gonna turn them upside down, first of all, onto the, the bacon like this. Then I'll wrap the bacon around it, so like that. We make a nice little parcel, and flip that over. And we'll do the same here. This is our presentation side, so we can just divide it out a small bit on the bottom. And this will kind of seal itself as well, because we're gonna cook it on where the join is at the bottom. And I'm just gonna brush another little small bit of butter on the tray here. So you can see that there. Right over there. We lift our piece of cod. And there we go. And I have uh, another little bit of pepper just on top. And I'm just gonna give it another little brush of butter as well. This butter will also, it will add flavor, but it will also help for to get a bit of color as well on the fish because the, the butter will start, the sediment will start to brown and color up in the oven. So I have the oven on here at 180. So I'm going to cook it in there for about 12 minutes. All right. So I had the oven on preheating. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to set the timer on this just to make sure that I get 12 minutes. So, and that's 12 minutes for that, all right? So it should be just kind of perfect that it's just cooked and it should still be moist and the bacon should be crispy. 
Um, if, if it's coming near the end of that, after 10 minutes, I might turn the oven up to 200 just to crisp the bacon another small bit. All right? Now, so now I'm going to get on to this part here, and this is the potato, saffron, and tomato broth that I'm going to make. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to knock on the induction cooker. So these induction cookers, they're, um, they're still, I suppose, pretty new for people to use them, but they're absolutely brilliant. They're actually faster than gas to cook on. All right? So I'm going to just take the lid off and leave it to the side there, and I'm going to start this. And I'm going to, you'll see the heat here will be instant in this. So I'm going to put it up to, I think nine is the highest it goes to. So I have it on and you'll actually start to feel the heat here starting actually just there now. The heat is starting already. All right. So this is a special kind of pan as well. It has a very thick uh, magnetized base in order to work on induction. Not every pan will work on it. And it's amazing. This is a kind of a new technology and yet one of the oldest types of equipment, cast iron, works perfect on induction, all right? So I'd, I'd also use in, uh, cast iron pans if I was doing steaks and stuff, all right? So now we have this in here, so I'm gonna add in my, and we'll just see, you can actually, listen, you'll hear it starting to sizzle a small little bit, and you can actually see it starting to cook and starting to react already. And that's like literally in a couple of seconds while we were talking. So induction, is faster than gas to use. Now you can see the heat starting to come there and you can maybe see some of the, the steam, the smoke starting to rise. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna let these sweat for a little bit. And the reason we're gonna let them sweat is to get the flavor out and maybe to get a slight little bit of caramelization as well so that it helps with the color of the broth. And while I'm waiting for that to happen, I'm just gonna put a lid on it here just because it'll help when I put the lid on, it's going to compress the heat down onto it and it's going to help kind of saute them and steam them a little bit at the same time. And what I'm going to talk about here is the saffron that I'm going to use in. So this is saffron, all right? So this is the most expensive, uh, probably, ingredient that a chef will use, all right? So um, I'd say this is like, for weight-wise and cost-wise, it's probably as expensive as buying gold, all right? So saffron is uh, from the crocus, it's from this, it's the, the little stamen from the crocus flower, and it can only be picked in a, like, I think it's like a two or four hour window, all right? So this will add a color, but will add a flavor. And some chefs would just use maybe turmeric for color, but that doesn't add flavor, all right? So this will add a fabulous flavor to our broth as well. So we're gonna put that in there in a second. So now we'll just have a look at this. We can see this, look. If you don't keep an eye on this, you could actually end up um, over caramelizing, or what's known as burning. So we don't want that to happen. So we're getting a nice color here on these. So we're nearly ready now to start adding the rest of the ingredients. So the rest of the ingredients that are going in here, I'm just gonna put the lid on this here for a second. The rest of the ingredients, we have a stock. Now, even though this is a fish dish, I'm using a vegetable stock here. Because um, fish stock um, can become, sometimes it'll be a little bit too strong. So like a nice vegetable or even a chicken stock would be good. We have some sherry, we have some uh, bay leaf. I have a little bit of uh, thyme and rosemary. We have some chopped parsley to add at the end. I have some puree to add now in a minute and I'm gonna cook that out. And then these tomatoes, what I've done with these, these are just cherry tomatoes and I just split some in half, put some, a little bit of uh, oil on them and some rosemary, some sea salt and some pepper and I just cooked them in the oven for about maybe 20 minutes just to soften them up and to get the get a nicer flavor in them now you can see the heat here really is coming on this so I can move it off the heat a little bit and I'm going to add in the tomato puree and it's important that you cook out the tomato puree a little bit it's uh, some people just add this and then they kind of add go on to the next stage but it's important that you cook it out to kind of um, get get it to mix with the onions properly is one thing but also to get this kind of uh, bitterness that's in the tomato puree out of it by heat and also you're releasing more flavor when you're doing this. So you can see how hot this gets. I'm actually gonna turn it down a shade. So I'm just gonna turn it down a little bit. So now we're ready. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna add the sherry next and the sherry here is going to deglaze the pan at the same time and it's going to lift the flavor off the bottom of the pan and you'll see 
If I put it on here now and I put the heat back up again, and then I give it a second, and then I put this in, you can hear that. And that's lifting all that flavor off the bottom. So it's the cold reacting onto the heat of the pan, and it's lifting all this thing off. It's kind of like a freeze tie action. So we want to let this reduce a small little bit. And what we can do now, we can add in our, this is a, some bay leaf. So, so just some fresh bay leaf, we'll put this in. And I have a little bit of thyme and rosemary. It's not in the recipe, but I have a little bit of it there and it's nice and it'll add some flavor as well. You don't have to put it in if you don't want to. Now I'm gonna add my stock here next, because that's reduced enough, it reduces very quickly. Again, like I said, because of the heat, because of the heat that's involved here, it's going to reduce very quickly because it comes up to heat very quickly, it does. So then I have my potatoes just diced and strained and I'm just going to add them in here so you can see that. And the fish has got six minutes left and I'm going to turn this up now a small little bit. I think that's as high as I can go though. Yeah. So now, I'm just going to put the lid on this. I'm going to add these tomatoes into it in a minute as well, but I'm just going to wait for a few minutes for that. You can see this here is starting to bubble nicely, all right? And uh, they'll start to cook these little potatoes. They're tiny little potatoes, so they should cook maybe in about maybe eight to 10 minutes. If the fish is ready, and you can see in here in the oven, the fish is starting to look, you can see it sizzling on the, on the tray and it's starting to cook nicely, but I'm gonna turn it up a small little bit so that bacon will brown a small little bit more. So I'm just gonna turn it up a shade up to about 190, all right, for the last five minutes. Now, you can see there our, our pot is bubbling away lovely, and there's a nice smell coming up off of that. So what we're gonna do then is we're gonna add in this, these nice tomatoes, put these in. And I'm gonna put in some of those herbs and a little bit of the juice that's on the tray there as well. Because we'll all add flavor to it. And I'm gonna add my saffron now. So the saffron, I could have, you can soak this, but I don't need to because it's gonna actually color and flavor in this here. So I'm just gonna add like a, a good pinch. And a small bit goes a long way with this. You don't need to have a lot of it in there but you'll get the perfume and the aroma from the saffron. It's very distinctive. So now, I'm just gonna let this cook out here for a few minutes and we'll clean up as we go along. Now, so just before, I'm gonna taste this to see for the seasoning. So I want to see though, do I need to add more salt or more pepper or, you know, how is it? I think it's actually salty enough, but I'm gonna add some pepper to it. And the other thing I'm gonna do there is I'm just gonna see how the potatoes are. So they're actually nearly there. And what I've done beforehand with those potatoes, I blanched them a small little bit in boiling salted water just to kind of pre-cook them slightly. And then what I've done was I put them um, under cold water. So then when I, I can finish them in this. So you're kind of helping yourself out here because the fish cooks in a very short length of time. So we want the potatoes to be cooked as well, all right? So this dish is nearly ready now to put together. So we're just waiting for it to come out of the oven there. And I'm going to garnish with just a little bit of chopped parsley, a little bit of a little wedge of lime, just because it's a little bit different from using lemon. You could use lemon if you want. Um, but I just think it's a little bit nice sometimes. Uh, lime has got that little bit of a sharper, kind of nicer uh, flavor, savory flavor kind of. So you can see in here, our fish is starting to brown nicely on top here. You can see it. So we'll give it the full, 12 minutes and we'll just check it then and we'll see what it's like. So the two minutes have gone by now and we're ready to serve up. 
So our uh, potato and saffron broth is ready and the stock has, has reduced down into it. That um, it's still moist, but it's not, it's not swimming. It's not like, uh, it's not watery. It's actually thickened up nicely as well. And the potatoes are just cooked and you can still see everything in it. Our fish here and our, our cherry tomatoes are ready. So we take them out. So you can see them sizzling nicely. And this is our fish. So that looks really nice. So we push this over here a small bit so you can see it. So we go this way. All right, and then what we'll do is, I have this lifter here. So this will be, to, we'll just loosen this now before we go. So you see the way this one has a lovely color on it, so I'm going to loosen this up. We're ready to serve up. Looking really nice. And then we'll take our little cherry tomatoes here. The tree there. Usually we like to work in odd numbers because they look better to the eye. So we just put the tree up in there and that. And we take our little bit of parsley, give it a little drink around the edge here. And then also dip the lime in it there a little bit. And put that up there on top, make it can stay. So there it is, this is our roast cod with smoked streaky bacon on a potato, tomato and saffron broth and topped with some roast cherry tomatoes and a wedge of lime. Our competition to win one of two 50 euro one for all vouchers is now open. Simply take a photo of one of tonight's culinary or mocktail creations that you have made using the letters MTU as an element or as part of the decoration. Send your photo by email to succeedingtogether at mtu.ie and the best presented food dish and mocktail creation as judged by our lecturers will each receive a 50 euro one for all voucher. Terms and conditions apply. Emails should be received no later than 9 p.m. on Friday the 26th of March 2021. Good luck to everyone. In a normal year, we welcome thousands of students to the department to view our facilities through our open days, our transition year days, and through the Exploring MTU module. We also visit schools as part of our roadshows to engage directly with students, and one of the most popular activities on these days is always our mocktail demonstration. So I'm going to hand you over now to Gail Cotter, lecturer in beverage industry management, who's in our beverage industry management lab for a demonstration on some great non-alcoholic cocktails. The Nojito, a homemade lemonade and a mock Irish coffee. Thank you, Gail. Hi, my name is Gail. I'm a lecturer here in MTU on the Bachelor of Business in Beverage Industry Management. And I'm going to show you how to make a non-alcoholic cocktail or mocktail, which is called a nojito. So to start off, we're going to take a nice tall glass like this one, which is a hurricane glass or any type of a tall glass that you have. And to this, we're going to add four wedges of freshly cut lime. So just drop them into the glass. Now I use the tongs, but you know, you can use your fingers if you've washed your hands. Drop your four wedges of lime straight into the glass like that. To this, we're going to add some apple juice. Any brand of apple juice will do. And we're going to put in 70 milliliters, okay? So 70 milliliters. You can use just a measure that you have at home for this. And drop it in. This gives a nice sweet flavor to the actual drink. And then we're going to muddle this. So muddling is actually, we're using this thing called a muddle. 
But what we're going to do is we're just going to press down on the lime and what we'll do is we'll be releasing the oils from the zest of the lime and the juice from the lime flesh itself. So a little bit of muddling, not too hard. Now to this we're going to add six to eight mint leaves depending on the size. So this would be a large mint leaf. So if they're that size, you only need six. Okay, drop them straight in again. Now I'll have them pre-counted. So and we're going to top this up with some crushed ice. Now some of us have um, ice machines at home that make crushed ice, but if you don't, all you need to do is actually just take some ice cubes, put them into a towel and take out your frustrations with a rolling pin. So literally just eat it. So this is a nice, long, refreshing drink. Hopefully on a nice summer's day, you could relax and drink this one. Um, so it's a lovely mixture of apple, mint and lime. and then we just stir it up. Now, when we're stirring this, what we're trying to do is bring the lime and the mint up through the ice, okay? There you go, it's a nice little mix. And then we're just gonna to top it up with some soda water to add a little bit of fizz to the drink. Sparkling water will work just as well as soda water. You don't need to buy soda water specifically for this. And if you want to be very professional about it, we'll take a little napkin and serve it. And that is a nojito, a non-alcoholic mojito. This is a very simple mocktail. This is homemade lemonade. This is a very easy thing to make at home. All you need are some lemons, some sugar syrup, which is simply sugar dissolved in water. So take equal quantities of sugar and water, so 100 grams to 100 mils of water, put them into a saucepan, heat it gently until the sugar dissolves and you have sugar syrup. You can put it into a bottle like this and keep it at home for as long as you want. And then lemon juice. And here I have some fresh lemon juice that's already been juiced. So into, I'm just gonna use a mixing jug here and the reason I'm using this, just any kind of a glass or any kind of a jug will do is because I'm actually going to pour it into a little lemonade bottle here. So into the jug, I'm just gonna put some ice to make things nice and cold. It's not necessary to put some ice on, but if you want to, you can do that. And then it's going to be um, 200 mils of sugar syrup to two lemons. So more or less equal quantities of them as such, okay? So I'm just gonna make one jug here. So I'm gonna make literally just 30 mils. And the same with the sugar syrup. I'm just going to give it a quick stir. This is just to mix it together. And then into that, I'm going to add some sparkling water. Now I have some lovely Pellegrino here, but you can use any type of sparkling water or soda water, in fact, for this. The exact ingredients are actually 200 mils of sugar syrup, the juice of two lemons, and 700 mils of water. And again, Quick stir. Just strain it. I'm going to strain it into this little um, milk bottle as such here. These are lovely for the summer because you can just carry them around with you. Any kind of uh, a little vessel is nice. Yeah. And again, just pop a little straw into that to make it easier to drink out of. And there we have it. Very, very simple and nice, refreshing glass of homemade lemonade. I'm going to make a mock Irish coffee. So Ireland is very famous for one drink and that is Irish coffees. Well, we're famous for a lot of drinks, but one of them in particular is Irish coffees. And now I'm going to show you how to make a mock Irish coffee so there's no alcohol in it. So this is a lovely non-alcoholic hot drink. And it's good for people who would like, you know, a nicer drink than just, you know, maybe a mineral or something. Um, and this is actually very easy to make again. So. I have a preheated glass here, so literally spoon into the glass and add some boiling water to it. Then we just dispose of the boiling water. We put it into an actual other vessel um, with a heated spoon in it. So put that spoon in there to keep it warm. We'll get to that later. So here I have an Irish coffee glass. So I think every home in Ireland has one of these. So typically these kind of glasses. 
or you might have these little uh, latte glasses or latte style glasses as well that you can use equally as, as easy or use any kind of a stemmed wine glass for this. And to the glass I'm going to add two spoons of light brown sugar. Now obviously you could use sweetener if you want but the sugar does help when it comes to floating the cream in a moment. And then I'm going to add a spoon and a half of just regular powdered coffee. Now powdered coffee is actually better to use than granules because granules tend not to dissolve correctly inside in the Irish coffee and it looks kind of murky when you actually pour the cream over it. So to this we're going to add some nice freshly boiled water to roughly an inch from the top of the glass and then stir. Now the whole idea of stirring here is to dissolve the sugar and to dissolve the coffee as well. Now the reason we preheat the glass at the start is because it actually helps when it comes to floating the cream in a moment that the glass is quite warm before you start making the drink. If we were making an Irish coffee, it's at this stage we would be adding the uh, whiskey to the drink. Yeah, so if you can see that there is actually no sugar floating in that anymore. Now the trick here is when you're stirring, you're creating a swirl at the top of the drink. So you need to stop that swirl in order to actually successfully float the cream on top. So literally either go anti-clockwise or clockwise depending on which way you've been stirring and still the drink. And then the drink will actually just sit still. Okay. Now here I have some freshly whipped cream. Of course we have beautiful cream here in Ireland. So this is just a lovely freshly whipped Irish cream very lightly whipped so it's not solid it's moving so it literally will move in the jug itself okay and always stir it just before you pour because it might have separated out a little bit and you might get um, some very light milk at the bottom and when you pour it it'll actually go straight down to the bottom of the drink and it'll sink so here I have a lovely little gadget that I bought down in Jameson and it's actually an Irish coffee spoon so you can just balance it on the side of the glass okay so I'm just going to use a regular teaspoon because that's what you'll be using at home regular teaspoon. It's been in the hot water here, so it's lovely and hot. Okay, and what I'm going to do then is I'm going to hold it over the coffee, get it as close to the surface as you possibly can without touching it. Do not put the spoon into the actual coffee because if you do, it will sink. If you need to balance it on the side, please do. Okay, and then pour. So steady pour. Here comes the coffee. And this is where we start saying prayers and we hope the best. And hopefully it's not sinking. Don't think it is. And we pour, pour, pour. Keep going. Take a deep breath. Good. Yeah. So as you can see, there's a very clear definition between the coffee and the cream, and that's exactly what you want. Okay, so it's this clean line between the two. We're going to grate some fresh nutmeg. Now you might have just regular grated nutmeg at home, you know, the powder nutmeg, and that's fine. Just sprinkle a little bit over, not too much. You don't want to overpower it. But I've just got some nutmegs here. I've just got a little grater. And I'm literally just going to grate a little bit of this over it, okay? So not much, just enough to give it a little bit of flavor and a nice aroma when you pick this up. There you have it, a mock Irish coffee. So, join to and enjoy. Thanks Gail, some great ideas there for outdoor dining for this summer to come, and even a mock Irish coffee for the bad weather days. Let's go back now to JJ Healy in the demonstration kitchen for our final segment, his vanilla and lemon yogurt mousse. I'm going to show you how to make uh, a vanilla and lemon mousse. So this is, uh, I'll be using uh, yogurt, quark, I have some ice and sugar, vanilla essence, I have some uh, zest of lemon, the juice of lemon and I have some gelatin. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start uh, by beating some egg. I have some egg white here. I have a little bit of salt in it. 
So I have it beaten, I'm just going to give it a little mix up here, and this is going to add air to the mousse later on. For this dish, I'm going to require a small little bit of hot water, so I'm just going to heat that up um, as I'm getting the rest of the ingredients together. I just want this water to get a little bit hot to help dissolve the gelatin, which I'll be coming to in a minute. So my egg whites here are just beaten up to give some air to the mousse. And so now I'm just going to combine everything together. So this is the yogurt. So there's 350 grams of yogurt. And this water, it's important that the water is hot and maybe just come to the boil, but that it's not too hot when you add the gelatin to it because what will happen is that if it was too hot, it will actually kill the gelatin. So I'm just gonna mix that there together. That'll mix lovely. I'm gonna add my quark here next. So the quark kind of is used instead of maybe like cream cheese. So this is a uh, zero fat. It's really good for you. Cream cheese has a high percentage of fat in it. So this quark will give it a nice creamy texture, but without all the added calories. So this is my ice and sugar. So I've just this uh, uh, in here. I'm just going to mix this all gently. So I'm just to spread it across the top here for now. I'm going to add in a nice little bit of, this is the zest of one, one lemon, just chopped as well. So I mean, this in here, all of it in here. So we can put these out of the way. And this is the vanilla essence then. This is actually vanilla extract, which is actually a better quality of uh, vanilla uh, flavor. So it's an extract rather than an essence. So this is like pure vanilla. So that goes in next. And then to continue that kind of hit of lemon, I have the, the juice of one lemon here as well. So this is a really easy uh, dessert to make and uh, it looks really, really good when it's finished. And it has that kind of, um, almost like that panna cotta quality to it. So I'm just gonna combine these all together here. And you're just looking to kind of incorporate the quark and the yogurt together. But I can see that in this vanilla extract, I can see the seed of the vanilla in it, which is going to give it a lot more flavor. So then, I'll just make sure that this is dissolved enough for what I want. And this is going to set our, our yogurt for us, and uh, our the mousse. So I'm just going to put that in, and then I'm going to put in the egg white very last thing in, because I want to keep that air. And you'd actually notice it's starting to set already even. We're just gonna combine that really well. And at this stage, I'm just gonna check for the, the taste for the sweetness to see is it sweet enough. So to me, this is just the right amount of sweetness in that it's not sickly sweet and it's still a little bit tart from the lemon. So I think there's plenty in that. So now I'm just gonna fold in my egg whites here. So you can see, if you look here, you can see the way they've They've kind of fluffed up and that's the air I'm looking for. So then what I'm gonna do is, I could use a spoon to fold this in, but this, this whisk actually is ideal because of the, the width between the prongs and the whisk. So I can just cut it into it like this, look. So I'm cutting it in. So I'm still keeping the air, but I'm mixing it in fully because you, you don't want to get uh, a lump of just the egg white on its own. You want it to mix in nicely here with the yogurt and with the quark and with all the other flavors. So again, I can see the seeds in this. I can see the zest of the lemon. And this is gonna make this very, very tasty. And I'm trying not to drop any on the sides. So it goes nicely into the middle and I don't make any marks up along the side of the bowl. So now we have this made here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this into the fridge underneath here and it'll set. And then we'll serve it up. So we'll put this in. Now this fruit, you could, you could macerate this fruit. And to macerate means that I would just sprinkle some uh, sugar, some icing sugar on this, stir it around and leave it to, to kind of stew in its own juices. But um, 
and you can do that and I have it in the recipe for you but I prefer just to use the fruit the way it is just like this and it gives a lovely a little bit of a crunch and then it's not too sweet when you mix them all together when you have them with the little macaroon biscuits that we're using here as they say I have one that I made earlier so I'll just take that out for you and we'll serve that so that's on the plate like that and this is the way it's served so this is a lemon and vanilla uh, yogurt mousse with some uh, fresh fruit and some little macaroon biscuits Thanks so much, JJ. I'm looking forward to that. Well, that's it for this evening's MTU Succeeding Together event. Don't forget our competition to win two 50 euro one for all vouchers and get your photos of one of tonight's creations into Succeeding Together at mtu.ie. Not forgetting to use the letters MTU as an element or decoration on your dish or mocktail. My thanks to Gail and JJ and to all of you for joining us this evening. And don't forget to log on next Monday at 7 p.m. for the next in the MTU Succeeding Together series, Space, an Opportunity for All. Good night.